All right, guys, you are now tuned in to our special midweek version of Substitute Teachers Lounge, which we'll call the Weekly Student Spotlight. All right, we are proud to introduce Rosie from England today. She is going to be in here with us on our Substitute Teachers Lounge Student Spotlight today. Rosie, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me. How are you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm doing great as well. Why don't you just, for a couple of minutes, tell us about your life journey to where you are today, maybe where you grew up, the schools you attended, act, any activities you're involved with, anything along those lines that you'd like to share with us? Okay, sure. So, um, I don't know if you've had mature students on here before, but being 28 means that I've lived quite a varied life before I've actually ended up going to uni. Good, um, good. I grew up in a place called Soham in the UK, which is um, a quite a small town. Um, it's in Cambridgeshire, which is quite a, a well-off area, um, but my family wasn't necessarily... Uh, well off but people assumed that I was because of my accent Um, and I think that's actually affected a lot of my jobs that I've had like going into those jobs people have assumed that you know I'm smart and intelligent because of my accent (laughs) Um, I mean they're not wrong but you know (laughs) (laughs) I agree I agree (laughs) so I actually um it surprises people when I say that I really didn't get along with school when I was younger I acted out I um used to bunk off I didn't go in when I should have I walked out of exams I was really um quite a troubled teenager and I hated authority so we've all had our moments yeah (laughs) coming back at 28 gives me a unique opportunity in that I actually want to learn now good for you good for you Tell me again, I know you shared with this with me through your email, but for our listeners, tell me what you're studying now and any activities you may, I know you're on one of the boards there or maybe a couple of them. So feel free to share that with us. So I'm first year studying at the University of Sheffield in England. I study Korean language with a few extra modules on history, culture, economics, that sort of thing. Um, I'm also the East Asian Studies representative on the Student Union Council, and it's been rated the the top student union in the UK for the last 10 years. So there's quite a lot of pressure to keep it up there. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm also on a a few other committees, but they're um, quite boring with boring names like the Officer Remuneration Committee and things like that. So I won't bother you with that. (laughs) (laughs) that's great that's great tell us before we I I know you've got a podcast and I want you to talk about that before we do that tell us just since a lot of us that listen to this are either teachers or substitute teachers and we're always interested with students of every age Mm. if you had to choose characteristics of your favorite teachers what would they be Um, I think, especially substitute teachers, they fall into sort of two main categories. You have the babysitters who don't really care and they just hand out the work and ignore the class. And then you get the people who do care and they do try, but there's only so much they can do because they're not really involved in the long time learning of the class they don't really know where you're at and they just have to rely on the work the other teachers set you know it's not very interactive but then I think there's this wonderful miraculous third kind that breaks all of the rules and they don't sit there and do the work the teacher has set and 
they forget to give you the homework and the next teacher ends up being angry the next lesson but these are the teachers that I used to absolutely love we had this one teacher that would sit there and go on wild tangents about his teenage years and somehow tie it into the subject matter or good I like it I like it. tell us some random fact about how well endowed Napoleon was or how the best pirate (laughs) in the world was this Chinese ex prostitute that died in her own bed at the age of 70, you know? Oh no. Okay. <laughs> These that certainly makes the... it interesting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. These <laughs> stories were the sort of stories that made me so passionate about learning. And when I think back to those lessons, they were the sort of lessons where the teacher never had to tell the class to be quiet because we wanted to listen and learn. And right. I think the lessons we took away from classes like that weren't tangible or gradable. You can't, you know, enthusiasm isn't something you can teach or write down. But Very the inspiration, good. I like the way you said that. <laughs> the inspiration yeah. that you gain can be implied to the rest of your academic life, you know, whether you realize it or not as a student. So I guess I think my advice would be to share your passion because it will ignite it in others even 30 years later. I tell you what, we've had some answers before similar to that, but I don't know if anybody has said it that well before. So I really like what you had to say. It certainly, <laughs> it certainly gives those of us that want to teach and even substitute teach uh, something to strive for because we're always looking for those ways to connect with our students. Yeah, for sure. I think it must be quite hard as substitutes to go into a class full of absolute strangers and still feel like you've made an impact at the end of the lesson but right right um, that's that's what we shoot for some do some do it's definitely worth bearing it in mind all right now let's show off your podcast for a little while i've already listened to a couple of episodes (laughs) it's called things you should know with rosie so tell us about that what motivated you to begin it Mm -hmm. uh, start the podcast what you look to get out of it as the months go on go ahead So the podcast is based on world history and general knowledge. I based it on three pretty simple objectives starting out and they've kind of, you know, still stayed in the forefront, even though a lot has changed. So obviously, first and foremost, I wanted it to be interesting um, for both me and my listeners. I think I've been achieving this. You have, you have. (laughs) Thank you. I'm actually surprised by the amount of interest I've had over the last few weeks. I thought perhaps Good. hearing me ramble on about history would be the last thing anyone wants to listen to, but apparently <laughs> that's not the case. And um, yeah, my listeners have found it just as interesting as me. I think that as a teacher, you probably know how good it feels when people are interested in the same subject that you are and that you're personally passionate about. Yes, so yes. That's been really good. Um, secondly, I wanted to try and hold people accountable for their own learning. Um, I think it's all too easy to blame the people that taught us for missing out important bits or things we should know. And ultimately, it's up to us to fill in those gaps. Yes. So world history is immense and everything is important oh, so man. It's, it's up to us to be in control of our own knowledge and that's why I sort of see it as more of a group project rather than just me like I present and I research each show but the content's suggested by my listeners and like I learn with them um, yes and part of this is also making sure that my sources are stated and trustworthy so that right, we right. can all make sure that what we're learning is is valid yeah, and you're really making me look bad because I could tell once I listened to one of yours, you put a lot more research in yours than I do on this end. So oh, it no, was really no. good. <laughs> I, I have so much respect for your podcast. It must be so hard to go in and, and have someone that you don't know what they're going to come out with. You don't know if I'm going to have anything worth publishing at the end of the day. You never know. No, it, in fact, it's been very enjoyable. I've, uh, and I don't, I don't mind telling you, you probably already know this. You're our furthest away of any guests that we've mm. ever interviewed mm. here geographically. So yeah, I was looking, ex- I was excited about getting you on. I listened to the episode. I listened to your, the five minute intro, you know, first podcast that you had. Mm. Then I, in, I listened to the one on about the lions 
And that was just fascinating to me. So I will encourage all of you guys that are listening. I will put Rosie's link on my show notes so that you have that and you can go straight to that. Is there anything else you want to share with us before the episode's over? Yes, actually, there is one more thing about my podcast that I, great, great. I'm really passionate about. So I wanted the show to be accessible. I really enjoy listening to podcasts. And one of my favorites is Welcome to Night Vale. I'm sure you've heard of it. Everyone's uh-huh, heard uh-huh. of it. At one point in my life, I had really terrible generalized anxiety. And I couldn't listen to podcasts like Night Vale because of the advertisements, the music, the yeah. sound effects. Um, And I wanted to make sure that anyone could listen to my podcast, whether they have sensory issues or they just want something to listen to while they drop off to sleep. (laughs) I'm not offended, you know. (laughs) (laughs) If someone finds it boring, then they can use it as a sleep aid. (laughs) My podcast is purely my voice and I have the transcription and additional diagrams online for anyone who needs them. And I really, I just want to make sure that everybody has the ability to feel involved. Yes. And I love that about that. I'm glad you did share that. I, I read that uh, on your podcast mm. and I'm, or maybe it was in the email. I can't remember which one, but I think you have done an outstanding job. So keep up the good work. Thanks very much. It's been really right. great to be here as well. All right. Well, I thank you for being with us today, Rosie, and you have uh, the best life you can over there, and maybe we'll be able to chat in our future again, okay? Yeah, sure. Good luck with teaching, everyone. All right. Thank you. All right. Hope you enjoyed that student spotlight. Tune in for another student spotlight next week in the middle of the week. In the meantime, we've got our normal substitute teacher's lounge episode on Sunday. See you then. Music provided by bensound.com.